please welcome Chairman of the Board of Directors of FIRST, Mr. Walt Havenstein. Good evening, and welcome to FIRST largest annual gathering of its many loyal supporters. Approximately 25 years ago, FIRST founder, Dean Kamen, and one of FIRST's early great supporters, Dr. William Murphy, were enjoying the great technology of a new helicopter, and were discussing their mutual concern about the shortage of engineering, science, and math talent being developed. Dr. Murphy, a notable and successful inventor of medical devices, casually mentioned to Dean that his father, William Perry Murphy, had shared the Nobel Prize for work in devising and treating pernicious amnesia. And Dean Witt wanted to see the prize. But the Nobel Prize, presented in honor of the work that led to saving and improving so many lives, was tucked away safely in storage rather than being displayed and touted the way a Grammy Award or a Heisman Trophy might be. This observation led Dean to recall the wise observation of Dr. Woody Flowers about cultures. Societies get the best of what they celebrate. And so Dean and Dr. Flowers wondered, what would happen if we were to break the mold and change our culture to one that honors and respects science and technology? What would happen if real life heroes like Dr. Murphy and his father were visible to kids. Dean thought, what if I started an organization like FIRST? Others, starting with Dr. Woody Flowers, joined Dean and helped form the question, <laughs> what would happen, for example, if an organization were to organize a high school robotics competition like the one Dr. Flowers developed for MIT? Others, including many of you in the room, so soon joined a richly diverse group of people, united in a passion to encourage innovation and the development of a skilled workforce. We are honored to have with us tonight several long-term board members who have served first with incredible distinction. Francois Castang and Tom Stevens, both of whom have, among other contributions, been great leaders of FIRST in Michigan. Gordon Homer, who helped launch FIRST in Canada, and Jim Utaski, who led the start of the New Jersey and New York City Regional and served as chairman of the board of FIRST for many years. Tonight is a tribute to Francois Tonight is a tribute to Francois, Tom, Gord, and Jim, and frankly to each of you, the individuals who have chosen to break the mold in the hope of transforming our culture by creating a world where science and technology are celebrated and where young people dream of becoming science and technology leaders. American folk singer, at least of my generation, Glenn Yarbrough, described breaking the mold as a great adventure, the greatest adventure is what lies ahead. Today and tomorrow are yet to be said. The chances, the changes are all yours to make. The mold of your life is in your hands to break. After we let you enjoy dinner, we will share some stories of first success to honor all of you this evening. The people who have taken the chances, made choices, and molded not only your own lives, but also those of countless others. Thank you and enjoy your dinner. First is an amazing organization. I believe it breaks the mold in a number of, on a number of fronts and leaves the world in a better place. Years ago, right from the start, first recognized that our culture does not celebrate science, engineering, and technology. Early FIRST leaders recognized that even good students, good schools, good teachers, and good textbooks did not attract students to STEM fields. FIRST approaches this lack of interest as a demand challenge, not a supply problem, as is the focus for most reform initiatives. 
With our cutting edge, innovative programs designed to stimulate interest, first wonderfully exciting competitions borrow liberally from sports and entertainment. First has even recruited famous personalities like Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas to help generate demand and turn kids toward doing high tech stuff. However, first does not merely copy success, it leads success. For example, working with partners such as the incredible Lego company, first captures kids who never thought they would like science and technology. First also teaches students that it is more productive to build a better mousetrap than to study an old one. It's better to compete like crazy, but do it kindly. Our programs promote cooperation and gracious professionalism. The result? First, students learn how to work creatively and collaboratively. We know it's true. We've heard success stories from colleges and universities. We heard about it from the Dean of Engineering at the University of Michigan. After seeing first teams team up and take over the first year mechanical engineering courses, he had to level the playing field by allowing no more than one first alum on each design team. <laughs> the admissions office at MIT said freshman classes are typically 10% first alum. Colleges and universities are fighting over first students. They provide more than $16 million in scholarships to first participants. That's validation. FIRST has a continuum of programs so that students with all types of talent and all types of experience are able to get in the game at any point in their development. FIRST leads by creating an open culture where STEM is celebrated. Kids with all kinds of backgrounds and interests are celebrated for their openness to science, technology, engineering, and math. Tonight, we will witness how FIRST is breaking the mold. We will hear stories of how this single organization is having a major impact around the world. We start in a very appropriate place for storytelling, Hollywood. When not working as captain of her first team, FIRST Robotics High School team in LA, our first guest is busy as an actress. Please welcome one of the stars of ABC Family Network's hit comedy, Bunheads, Miss Emma Dumont. You know, they'll loosen up the more you fall. If I fall, you're gonna fall. All right, so have fun. Don't be mean. No pushing, no elbows. This is a sport with rules, remember it. Got it, remember the rules. Another bright, another June, another sunny honeymoon, another season, another reason for making whoopee. Good evening, and thank you, Dr. Flowers. I am an actor, an athlete, a dancer, a model, a musician, but most importantly, I am a student of FIRST. That's right. Two years ago, I found myself on an all-girls FIRST Tech Challenge team in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> And to be honest, initially, I didn't think spending all my free time in a small, hot room building robots seemed like that much fun. <laughs> and my mom did make me go to the first meeting. But what I found is that it's actually more thrilling than anything I've ever done. First Tech Challenge is an amazing initial step into technology for students. Its size is manageable, and its low cost allow all students to participate. FTC was great for me because it's condensed. In a matter of weeks, I learned how to program, fabricate, assemble, and design. And it was an amazing experience. By Christmas break, I had made an entire robot all by myself from start to finish, and I was so proud. But when the FTC season ended, I had to keep building. I wanted more. And that's when I joined my first robotics competition, Team 980. 
Now, FRC was harder, imagine that. <laughs> it was more challenging. I now had to design things in CAD, I had to program in C, and I had to fabricate all my own parts. Along with that, I had to use skills I learned in school, like trig and physics, to find things like vector force. But because of my experience in FTC, I was completely prepared. Now, there are students on my team that were painfully shy when they came to first. There were students that could not use a ruler when I first met them. There were students who never picked up a tool in their entire life. But with the help of our mentors, with the help of each other, and with first in our hearts, we have become more powerful than I have ever imagined. And I am proud. What I have learned at first is that you can do anything with the support of a team, a family. And as team captain this year, a mentor next year, and as I go on to study mechanical engineering, I hope to put that into my students. So I thank all of you, each and every one of you, for changing my life and for changing the life of every student who proudly wears a team number across their chest. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Emma, and congratulations. She is on the, she's one of the Dean's List finalists this year. First is, a delightfully, is delightfully available to kids, wherever they are in their journey to becoming innovators. I'd like to introduce you to a great group of FIRST LEGO League alums. Last year, FIRST LEGO League challenged kids to work in teams, research a problem, then use their imagination and their new knowledge to design a solution. Some think that children don't have the skills and the know-how to solve real problems. First breaks that mold. Please welcome alums from FLL Team MADART. Hi, my name is Abby Fox, and I am a freshman on FRC Team 1306, the Badger Bots and an alum of FLL Team MADART from Madison, Wisconsin. Like so many students, my first experience with FIRST was my FLL team. Last year, the FLL team was food safety. We researched the topic and learned that only 2% of food in lunch boxes was kept at an acceptable temperature. After running tests on multiple lunch boxes, we found that many failed to address this problem because they were not insulated, did not include ice packs, or the ice packs were not effective. This led us to design a new ice pack that would surround the food and attach to the side of the lunchbox so it would remain in place. By attaching the flexible ice pack to the interior sides of an insulated lunchbox, an adjustable cold zone can be created. We named our invention the Mad Box. After we designed the new lunchbox, we wanted to implement our solution, so we began the process of bringing it to market. After we made a prototype, in order to protect our intellectual property, we filed a provisional patent application. We then met with a design and prototyping company to get CAD drawings and a hard shell prototype of our idea. Hi, my name is Sullivan Sweet. To bring the lunchbox to market, we knew we had to partner with an existing manufacturer. We researched lunchbox retailers, and a company that stood out in their efforts to protect consumers was Land's End. We arranged a meeting with Land's End, and they were enthusiastic about the idea and decided to add the Mad Box to their line of lunch boxes. It was available last year as part of Land's End's Back to School line, and it was so successful, it will be available this coming year as well. Land's End has been a great partner. Thank you. Land's End has been a great partner. They've included us in the design and marketing process and have helped us spread the word about FIRST. Lens End even sponsored our local FLL tournament. 
We thank FIRST for giving us the chance few other 15-year-olds have, the great feeling of walking into Land's End and seeing our very own invention and knowing that we have made a small difference. Thank you. Congratulations, Matt Art. They are still on a roll. Their FRC team won the Wisconsin Regional Chairman's Award, and they're here competing for the big prize. You guys are doing great. So, I think their story shows that how important it is to start the journey early. It shows how effectively FIRST programs provide context for education. From Hollywood to the heartland, FIRST is breaking the mold. FIRST is access, an access point for gaining awareness and gaining opportunities and for gaining competence in the game of life. What we do is not rocket science, but we do have some rocket scientists. He's the Everly Distinguished Professor of Physics at West Virginia University. But once a week, Dr. Earl Seamy can be found hanging with a pack of inquisitive, inspired students. They're members of Mountaineer Area Robotics, MARS for short, and Seamy is co-founder of the team. Nearly 40 high school students in Monongalia, Marion, and Preston counties make up the team this year. They compete in robotics competitions with schools all over the country. So far, we're very, very grateful. 100% of our students have gone on to college, and 100% have received some sort of scholarship. That's a great figure of merit for us. And you'll, you'll find some of our kids will tell you right out that three or four years ago they thought, well, they might be a lawyer, they might be a doctor, and now they say, oh, I, I want to be a, a civil engineer, or I want to be an industrial engineer, or a physicist, or a chemist, or whatever. And we're seeing that, both on the, the young ladies and the young men, that they realize this stuff's kind of fun. Please welcome Dr. Earl Seamy, the Eberly Distinguished Professor and Chair of Physics at West Virginia University. Good evening. The FIRST Robotics program really is a great vehicle for pulling kids together from throughout our region and inspiring them them to understand how they can build their own brand of competence. What we are doing with FIRST in West Virginia is simple, and in some ways it does have some elements of rocket science, because FIRST is a launch pad for the youth of the future of the youth in West Virginia and in our nation. In West Virginia, and with our program, we're breaking the mold for what students think they can do. We open their eyes and we change their lives. I love my life as a working scientist, but honestly, being a FIRST mentor is often a lot more fun. Thank you for supporting this program. Thank you, Earl. Now let's move up, move up north for another example of where folks didn't just break the mold, they got rid of it entirely. Our next guest met as members of different teams on an alliance competing in an FRC event. Now, years later, they're still working together and recently started a new company. Form Labs. They produce a new desktop 3D printer. They blew the doors off in their Kickstarter crowdsourcing campaign. Form Labs sought to raise $100,000. They raked in nearly $3 million, and now they're part of Kickstarter history. Now listen to how FIRST helped them become innovators. Thank you, Woody. My name's Max Lebowski, and I'm here with uh, Ian Ferguson and Jason Livingston, and uh, we're a couple members from the Forum Labs team. And uh, I, I've actually known these guys for, for now um, eight years, and so Jason and I were members of uh, Team 1257 in New Jersey, and um, we actually met Ian in the finals of the New York City Regional in 2005, where we, we were on an alliance together. Uh, so, we, we worked well together on the Alliance, and we quickly got to know each other. Uh, a few years later, Max and I met up again at a NASA program for FIRST alumni. Uh, so, FIRST really connected us at the competition, and we have all stayed connected ever since. So, 
Fast forward a few years, and uh, when I started working on uh, this desktop 3D printer project and wanted to build a, a really revolutionary new product, I knew no matter what, we're not going to have enough time and money, and we're going to you know, have to get the best that we can get done with the resources we have. And I thought about the last time I was in a situation like that, and that was on my first team in high school. So. So I, I thought about Jason and Ian again and realized that they would be awesome people to bring together to work on this, so I asked them to join me at Forum Labs. Even though we had a little more than six weeks, engineering-wise, building a 3D printer was very similar to building a first robot. It's an electromechanical product, and it has mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and software all wrapped up into one project, and it needs to be integrated and work well together. And like the robot, the technology is just one part, with the testing, marketing, the imagery, public relations all play important roles in a company's journey to existence. And really, when you think about it, a desktop 3D printer is really designed for rapid product development, which is exactly what first teams do during the six-week build period. When we were designing our product, we were thinking of our experiences when we were at first. FRC really gave us that first-hand experience of going through that product development cycle. So to advance the industry, we invented a new tool and launched our own company. We hope every first team has a Formlabs 3D printer very soon. And thank you for having us, Woody. Congratulations, gentlemen. We're all proud of you. For those of you who need an amazing 3D printer, you can place your orders later tonight. First reach is well beyond technology. First programs in, are incredibly effective at building much needed skills and inspiring all types of students. In addition to placing education in context and promoting deep understanding, FIRST fosters a wonderfully rich and inviting community. The leadership for this community is in this room. Thank you. Our next guest is a proud parent of an FTC and an FRC alum. She wants to say thank you, too. Please welcome Franny Madison Kish. I am the mother of a FIRST Robotics team member. I used to be the mother of a child teachers and administrators had written off. My son, Joshua, was a loner, a throwaway, a student who, thanks to his alphabet soup of diagnoses, the schools tolerated but could do little for. So eventually, they shipped him off to a school for kids with behavior problems. In ninth grade, Joshua's luck changed. He was enrolled at St. Louis's Gateway Institute of Technology, a STEM school, and a counselor there encouraged him to join the robotics team. Joshua joined First Tech Challenge team number 288, and, I, and by December, all we heard about was robots, robots, robots. I attended my first robotics competition that December, and what I saw there was nothing short of amazing. My son, my Joshua, the boy others had dismissed as a troublemaker, was a valued member of a team. I stood on the sidelines and observed my son amongst his teammates, kids from all walks of life, kids of all colors and cliques, came together here under this banner of FIRST. The kids we would have called geeks when I was in high school were sitting amongst the cheerleaders and the athletes. My kid walked amongst them, and he fit. He was accepted by them, no questions asked. I marveled at this place, this group, where my loner son was an equal to all. As soon as the FTC season was over, the FRC season began. And of course, Joshua wanted to join that team, 931, as well. Today, Joshua is wrapping up his senior year with plans to major in electrical engineering in college next fall. He plans to be a first team member for life. The first organization changed my son's life. I would even say it saved his life. From a little boy, dismissed by many, to a proud member of a movement, he is succeeding today as a member of FIRST. Tonight, I am proud to say I am the mother of a first team member. I am the mother of Joshua Kish.
Thank you, Franny and Joshua. The story you have just heard is unique, but similar stories bubble up daily. These stories illustrate the warmth and the humanity of the first community. It is wonderful to hear how it, that pays off. Because of you, the programs reach many who otherwise might miss a chance to excel. First has a very broad-reaching impact. Our final vignette is a story of courage and commitment that stretches across borders. Our programs are successful because of the amazing dedication and leadership of team mentors. Here to tell one of the many stories is co-director of First Israeli Regional, Alicia McIntyre. Good evening. I have a story about one of First's great pioneers for breaking the molds. Mohammed Abu Fauda, an FRC mentor who eight years ago started the first ever Arab-Israeli team. Being an Arab in a Jewish state is not a simple task. Your identity lies both within the Israeli state and the Arab world, and the situation worsens during times of conflict. The first year that Mohammed and his team joined FRC in Israel, to tell you the truth, we were fearful of bringing the wider conflict into the first community. But to our surprise, the conflict was not even on the students' radar. They became friends. Our conclusion is that technology, robots, and kids can bring trust between the communities and better opportunities for all. It's tough to start a team that spans divergent cultures, and what we found on Muhammad's team is amazingly unique. Muhammad has done more than break the Arab-Israeli mold. He has started a Muslim Arab-Israeli team, including boys and girls, where the girls are treated as equals. I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you how rarely this is seen in the community here. On Muhammad's team, girls have equal roles and opportunities. It's amazing. Muhammad has a kind, gentle manner with his students, but his gentle way belies his powerful leadership. You know, in the beginning, the boys, uh, in one of their late night work sessions, told Muhammad that the girls should probably go home because it's a little too late, and according to their culture, they're not supposed to be there. Muhammad promptly countered that the girls were proving to be much smarter than the boys, so maybe they should go home. <laughs> and as you can guess, the subject didn't come up again. <laughs> and we hope that other members of the community will follow suit. At great difficulty, Muhammad and his family sometimes, Muhammad has convinced Arab parents to allow their children, girls too, to break molds. He's helped build a better community and so a better Israel. Listen to the students in this video clip you're about to see. You will first meet Muhammad's daughter, she was perhaps his motivation as a mentor. Yara was one of the first team members and now is, now, is now attending Tel Aviv University studying neuroscience. You hear another young woman who served as a referee this year. Her name is Nadine, now studying to be a doctor at Tel Aviv University. You will hear a young man on the team who broke the mold and took advice from his sister to start studying engineering. Thank you all for your support of Israel for FIRST and mentors like Mohammed who are enriching lives. At first, he was struggling by himself, and it was really hard because he just, he really wanted it to happen, and there was lots of obstacles in front of him. I think Muhammad brought the beautiful spirit to the team. He always tries to bring us together and and let us like appreciate the value of teamwork. At the first year, we came to the competition, and we saw guys everywhere, and a few girls here and there, and we were a team with, you know, with the majority of girls, so it, it definitely made us feel special and, you know, different in a good way. When we have to do something, he tells us, don't come and ask me, ask your teammates and work together. <laughs> I see it even now as a graduate of the team. I, I, visit, I visit them sometimes and the captain is usually a girl. My father is a worker and my mom is a cook. I never thought I'll be in the engineering field. My sister first joined the FLL team. She put the idea in my head, literally. 
And here I am after six years, I'm at FRC team, and this is my senior year, and I'm really thinking about going engineering, yeah. The guys would say, no, this should be done by guys, like driving the robot, because we're the PlayStation players, we're the one who play FIFA all the time, let us do it. But I remember that in the second year, Sad Muhammad decided he was gonna give one of the girls to drive no matter what because he really wanted her to experience this because at the end of the day, it's not about winning. Winning is fun, but he wanted other things as well. We stay like very late at night here. So in our tradition, that is something, it's not like usual. You could have friends from another, another place you could have a friend that doesn't really look like you or doesn't really talk like you and you still could be good friends and I think it's really nice and it's really empowering. Arabs perception of Jews and Jews perception, perception of Arabs is, is a little bit cha changed and different. We could live together and we could make beautiful things together, beautiful robots. Thank you, Alicia, and thank you, Mohammed. We hope you feel appreciated. You've just heard the sound of molds breaking. A dancer actress who builds robots, kids who are successful inventors, a bunch of high schoolers newly inspired to go to college, young folks starting a high-tech business, a young person's awakening, and a positive change in a complex culture. You have inspired many reasons for optimism. You should be proud, very proud. And now, please welcome first founder, Dean Kamen. Once again, I'm playing under protest. I was told by Vince and Cece that I didn't have to do anything tonight. And I see these images there in the book here. And I think you've heard it all. I know most of the people that know me probably don't believe it, but I actually don't, do know that Shakespeare said, brevity is the soul of wit. But if you know me at all, you know I don't have wit, and I certainly have no soul. So, so I have to think of something to say, but after all that, it's not easy. Some of you probably were here today and saw Will Smith. Will Smith, good. Will I Am, who talked to me, but don't say it, about some other people in the industry that we'll try to get back next year. <clears throat> and maybe Mutar Kent, the chairman of Coca-Cola, which happens to be the largest sponsor of sporting events on a global basis by a long shot. And you all know every year I'm focused on bringing some other resource to first. I don't think the growth we've had from 20 some odd teams 22 years ago to 29,000 teams in 69 countries this year was either accidental or easy. The good news is, by most metrics, that's pretty good growth. The bad news is we are still in the noise level of the global culture, even the U.S. culture. By any metric, the amount of resources and energy that's put into first teams around this country versus what's poured into other distractions, to me, is pretty chilling. But I never give up, and I don't 
intend to give up anytime soon. As you've seen by some of the very, very few examples you just saw tonight, first has an unbelievable impact. And those were not unusual stories. Walk through the pits tomorrow. Talk to any random student. Talk to any random mentor. Talk to any random room person in this room. First, for reasons that I don't fully understand, continues to be a place, maybe by self-selection, that attracts extraordinary people that are willing to try to change the world. I think it was Margaret Mead that said, never doubt a small group of dedicated, thoughtful people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever can. I don't think that should be surprising when you analyze it, because the world is always the way it is, because most people are that way. It's a truism. But if anybody wants to change it, there's a lot of inertia, there's a lot of vested interest, whether it's unions, culture, history. It's hard to change. That's not typically bad, because a lot of the world is good and stable. I'm glad it's hard to change. But we need some pretty substantial change if the next generation of kids in this country and around the world are really going to develop the skill sets quickly enough and develop enough judgment about right and wrong, and good and bad, and appropriate and inappropriate, so that the world, in this constant race between education and catastrophe, doesn't lose that race. And I still think it is inevitably going to be a small group of people that end up pushing it in the right direction. Too bad for all of you. You are that small group of people. <laughs> but we really have aligned interests. Because I know you may not believe this, because most of you only see me in this light. I really, really don't like groveling and begging for support from all the smart, busy, people I know. But if I want to get something done, I keep going back to the smart, busy people. Again, that would be you. If we can get first to where it's in every school, I'll stop bothering you. <laughs> we really have the same interests. It We're getting there. And I don't think we will continue to go along the path we've been on. You go from prototypes, proof of concept, limited production. Things always scale in a way that the first ones are really expensive and very slow and damn near impossible. And then finally, you change the process. And you go to high volume on anything, printing from writing, injection molding from I think first, I've thought this before, but I think first is way closer to that tipping point of going to scale, not by one by one asking individuals that have been willing to share this vision, but maybe with some of the new corporate sponsors we have and hope to have. And some of the personalities around the world that we have gotten attention from, maybe we can become one of those examples of a sweeping change for the good. I hope it happens soon. Until it does, we're going to continue to move along as best we can, as fast as we can. And I will continue to ask all of you 
to do what I know is unreasonable. I just don't know any other way to get there. And you have to ask yourself every day, what's the alternative? We need a smart, intelligent, rational, compassionate world. Just read the news. Just look at our politics. Just look around you. That isn't going to happen by itself. I think we can make it happen. It happens all the time, every day, inside the first community. You see these teams fighting on the fields and helping each other in the pits. You saw example after example tonight of what happens when you give people tools and self-confidence and the ability to effectively work in teams and communicate. Those skills aren't typically acquirable these days. In fact, most of culture is driving those skills out of people and organizations. So I think Cece and Vince told me just, I don't know what it's written, but just thank everybody tonight. I really do thank all of you, and I do know I'm primarily a pain in the butt to most of you. But I hope what you've seen tonight will convince you that it really is worth it. And maybe just to end on a slightly happier, funnier note, I was trying to think of something cleverer to say than Shakespeare and brevity, and I did think of one of, one of my heroes is, is Einstein, and he has lots of great, deep philosophical quotes, but one of the things Einstein actually did say when he was a wise old man was the difference between, actually he said, the only difference between genius and stupidity is that genius has its limits. <laughs> so I really want to live in a world where smart people rule where good policies prevail, where the future we could reasonably expect to be better than the present or the past, where the people that get it and care have the loudest voices. And I really do believe if we can spread first, we will achieve that. So I thank you for helping us, and I hope tomorrow you'll see that your investment of time and energy and resources is really, really worthwhile. Thank you.